In today's video, I wanted to really tackle a set of confusing, but very common multiple sclerosis symptoms. Symptoms involving the way you move your arms and legs. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. Both in the office and on telemedicine, we accept all major insurance carriers, and we're currently actively enrolling multiple clinical trials. When someone with MS has a weak arm or a weak leg, not all of the muscles are equally weak. Damage to the areas of the brain and spinal cord that control the arm and leg result in a certain pattern of muscles being weak. And so what do we see? We see that the muscles that move your arm and hand like this, which flip it over so your palms up, that's called supination. Those are weaker than the muscles that flip your hand this way. That's called pronation. And so the pronators went out. The muscles that pull your arm in, so the flexors, they tend to be stronger than the muscles that push your arm and fingers out, the extensors. And so what ends up happening is you have a pattern of weakness, if I exaggerate, like this. Okay. So we have a pattern of weakness. Now, superimposed on that pattern of weakness is the possibility of having spasticity in the same limb. Spasticity is very common in MS, occurring in about 70% of folks. And it's where the opposing uh, muscles of an arm or a leg don't play nicely in the sandbox together. So the arm wants to go like this, and this muscle didn't get the memo, and it's trying to do that. And the result is it fights with itself. And this manifests clinically as a limb that's hard to bend. So hard to bend your knee or bend your elbow, or a spasm where a limb is bouncing, or a cramp, like a charley horse, like where the muscle contracts and it hurts really badly. And someone with MS can have weakness and they can have spasticity. And in reality, they actually don't have to have both. So you can actually have spasticity of a limb, which is strong, or weakness of a limb, which is not spastic. So that's confusing. And spasticity is very temperature sensitive. So if that human with MS gets really cold, that limb can become really spastic and cramp up and spasm and be hard to bend. And then when they warm up, that goes away. So that's weird. Now you have to consider another layer of complexity. What happens when the limb gets warm? If the human with MS gets overheated, whether because they're out doing exercise or because they're in the hot sun or because they have an infection like a fever with a temperature, then they can short circuit their motor system in a different way and they can actually develop weakness. That's called motor fatigue or heat sensitivity. So you have a person with MS that has a weak arm and leg in a certain pattern, and when they get cold, they get stiff and cramp, and when they get hot, they get super weak. And then when their body cools down, it gets better. So I, I'm hopeful that this is starting to unravel a little bit of why the outside observer watching someone walk with MS or watching someone use their limb might be confused because the pattern of weakness and the manifestations can change throughout the day and they can change based on the temperature. Other factors can most certainly play into this. Someone can have what's called a pseudo attack or a pseudo exacerbation where they have a urinary tract infection, let's say, and their leg becomes weak. And when the urinary tract infection goes away, fortunately, the leg strengthens up again. If the person with MS has damage to other systems in the brain and spinal cord, it can massively impact the way that they move. For example, if the coordination systems of the brain and spinal cord, so the biggest one would be the cerebellum and all of its connections, if the coordination system is messed up, the person with MS can stumble while they walk like they're drunk, but they're not, or they can be moving their arms and legs like this with a tremor and knocking things over and being really clumsy. They can have trouble with fine coordination. And so someone with MS can have weakness in a certain pattern, which can get stiff and spasm when it's cold. It can get really, really floppy and weak when they're overheated. And if they have an infection, it can get more weak. And in addition to all of that, they may be incoordinated and stumble uh, when they move or have tremors because of the coordination problem they have. 
Now add on to that another system that might be impaired, sensory system. So the sensory system is how you tell where your hand is in space. I'll give you an example. I'm going to close my eyes. So here you can see my eyes are closed. I'll make a pointer finger and I'm gonna move it around erratically and I'm gonna stop and I can touch it. So I'll do it again. So I, I'm not looking, I'm moving my finger, I stop, and then I can take this finger and immediately touch it. The way that I do that is obviously not by seeing. It's because my body knows the joint positions of my hand and my finger, and my body can find it. That's a sensory system. That sensory system can be damaged in MS. And so you may not know where your limb is. And if it's a dark room or it's nighttime and you're walking outside, or if you step off the sidewalk onto uneven pavement, you may really have trouble walking and fall, not because you're weak, not because you're spastic, not because you're overheated, not because of incoordination, but because you can't feel. And so you didn't know where your limb was in space. To add insult to injury, having multiple sclerosis can make it really hard to stay in shape. And as a result, you can become deconditioned. So in addition to everything else I just said, you can develop difficulties with walking or strength or balance because you're out of shape. No fault of your own, part of the disease process, and yet also can contribute to falls and other issues that you can have. It's my hope that this video sheds some light on the complexities of motor problems in MS and hopefully made things a little less confusing. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and so please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I'll certainly look forward to reading it. If you'd like to learn more about the examination in MS and how we try to decode what's going on with the nervous system, click the playlist that's on the screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, I wanna thank you for learning about MS with me, and until my next video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, please be safe and take care.